The Indianapolis Colts give Jonathan Taylor and his agent permission to seek a trade per Adam Schefter. We'll talk about that and so much more inside this podcast with the No Horsing Around podcast. <laughs> What is going on? No horsing around. Family, Zach Boyd, back at it again. Jonathan Taylor has been given permission to seek a trade. And I'm a little bit puzzled, and and here's why I just want to talk through it and get an opportunity to kind of a quick reaction as well as hearing your stuff because that's what we care about the most, just you as the fan and your thoughts. You know, why didn't they do this from the beginning? What What was the point of Jim Ursay, you know, being defiant and saying, you know what, we're not trading them now, we're not trading them in October. Just a lot of back and forth, a lot of chaos, a lot of just different things going on, um, you know, behind closed doors. And ultimately, it just cooler heads have not prevailed. I know that Jim Irsay has worked very hard to kind of try to mend that. Chris Ballard has done a good job. He's been, in my opinion, stuck in the middle between the two. Um, but it's very clear now that, that Jonathan Taylor doesn't want to play football for us. And – you know, the Colts are going to accommodate him on that ask. And I'll, I'll take a line from Mike Tomlin. Um, we don't need hostages. We want volunteers. And as brutal as that sounds, as good of a football player as he's been for us in the past, you don't want guys held here against their own will. You know, you want guys who want to play for this football team. And you'd hope you can get something nice in return. Now, for me, expectations on, on the return, it's really hard because – he's not played football and when you haven't played football and these teams can't see what you actually have to put on display with the football team, it makes it hard to evaluate. Now, what are you going to give up for a guy who's been injured, who hasn't played, who allegedly has been injured again this off season, still dealing with that ankle injury. This is now eight and a half, not will be almost nine months dealing with the ankle injury. What in the world would you give up? What would make the Colts happy? You know, I've got a solution, and I've talked it through for a couple of weeks just off the record with several people. I think in a situation you're never going to get value for a running back, right? Very rarely you're going to get these crazy Christian McCaffrey deals. That was a desperation deal. That was an over-the-top deal. That was a perfect deal for the 49ers. I don't think the Colts are in this situation. I don't think there's another team that's going to be that desperate, especially with a guy who can't catch the football at that volume. Now, that being said – I would say he's still going to have a market. I don't know what that market's going to be like. Um, I think I like the route of trading him for a player, though. I think if you can get a good, young, quality prospect in return for him, that's probably the best value you, you, that's going to get out there. Why not go out there and look at a position of need, go out there and look at a pass rusher, go out there and look at a cornerback, maybe a dynamic, dynamic wide receiver, an interior offensive lineman that could really help your team. Now, this guy's got to be – a few things have to check the box for me. A, he's got to be young and in his prime. B, he's got to be locked up in a contract for multiple years. And C, he's going to have to be able to be a day one starter with no real health concerns. If you could check all of those boxes and you can go player for player, for me as a fan, that's the route I go. Because at the end of the day, a third round and a fifth round pick doesn't really equate to me – for an equivalent exchange for what we're giving up. We're giving up an all-pro level running back. You've got to get something back in return that can really benefit your football team and can really help you win football games immediately because now you're giving up your biggest offensive weapon minus your quarterback on your football team, and someone's going to have to step up. Now, I don't think you're going to trade them for a running back and get a running back out of that deal. Um that would be kind of silly, you know, to, to go get a star running back and try to lock them up on a long-term deal um, when you're already going through this situation. So, A, you're going to need to go find you another running back, one that can actually play and be serviceable um, to help while you kind of mitigate through this Zach Moss loss with a broken arm. And there's no guarantee he comes back week one, he's ready to go. Um, and rightfully so. I mean, when you break your arm, you know, your body tells you when you're ready to play football and there's no guarantee he wouldn't get re-injured as the season goes along. If they, if they bring him along too fast, I wouldn't hold anything on to, you know, I wouldn't put my year and bet my year on Zach Moss being your starting running back. I'll just put it that way, but we're interested in your thoughts. 
Guys, if you haven't had a chance to join this No Horsing Around family, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and we're so freaking fired up for this season. We're happy you're being a part of this as we're now over 2.8 thousand subscribers here on YouTube. Our family grows because of you. Um, it's always been because of you. Use your voice. Light us up in the comments. Jonathan Taylor requests a trade. We want to know your thoughts, and we want to know today.